Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish off my talk by, uh, or this, this meeting, by just going through some of the basic principles of the course and, and a bit about what we're going to do, etc. So, and if we finish early, we finish early and we can go, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So, <clears throat> this is really a, a rhetorical question. Do you need to become English to teach well? Uh, uh, would you want to? Uh, no, because we're talking about English as an academic lingua franca, and that is communication between non-native speakers. So the native speaker quality of English is, for me at least, totally irrelevant, except for the question of approximation, which is just, as I said earlier, to do with being understandable, and that's all. So when I certify, I'm not certifying that you, are, that you sound like someone from London. I'm certifying that you can be understood in an international context. <coughs> However, so, so luckily no one needs to become English, but you might want to uh, get this new certificate. And I'm not quite sure how it happened that you got involved in all of this, but the original idea that the, the, the rector had was that all of the new lecturers should, uh, it was obligatory, they had to take this course, but um, it would eventually be spread out to the senior lecturers as well. And so you're the first, actually. You're the first people who've done this oh, at this level. Cats. So you're, you are my, <laughs> yeah, you're my lab rat, so that's it. Yeah. But I um, think that the idea is that in, in the future we will have to teach more in uh, English. Uh -huh. uh, maybe we'll develop some new programs. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. 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 But you have uh, actually been uh, yeah. um, uh, developing a uh, master's degree. He says it's going to be conducted in English. Yeah, if it gets to be. If it gets, but it was also her, her uh, Annette's argument that if we are going to teach there, we have to be certified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But also, again, international conferences. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Hey, see, I, mean, I think it's useful, but uh, yeah. what is certification? It's a, it's a formal process. This is something I actually copied. I should have put quote marks around. A formal process to ensure that an individual Thank is you. qualified, sorry, Thank in you. terms of particular knowledge or skills to complete a particular task. So in other words, it sets a standard for a particular activity or task, and it me measures whether you meet the standard or not. So there, there are no grades. It's not like, you know, am I better than someone else who's passed? It just makes sure that you reach a certain level. That's what the principle of certification is. And the rector's request was that we should use what's called the CEFR. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's the Common European Frame of Reference for Language Skills. And it operates in all languages. There's, there's one for Danish, there's one for, you know, there's a set of criteria that you, uh, if you're a foreign speaker, that you need to meet. And he particularly wanted that so that this stuff could be transferable. So if you went and got a job somewhere else, you could say, I am certified at level C1 or whatever it is, or C2. <coughs> it tests what you can do, not what you can't do. And it involves various language activities, the CFR, that is such as reception, you know, when you're listening, can you, can you understand what's said, can you read uh, when, you're, when it's written material, production, can you speak well, can you write well, interaction, are you good at discussing uh, in, the, in the language, the target language, and mediation, I've never understood what that is, but translation and paraphrasing, for example, so it's when you take some, what somebody else says and, and put it into your own words, I guess. Um, but of course, there are, some of these are, are not so relevant for us. So what I did was I chose the ones that had to do with oral communication. So that's why I've underlined listening, speaking, discussing, and paraphrasing. Those are the, the particular ones that I'm interested in, in terms of the CEFR. And the CEFR levels, if you're not common with them, they are totally uh, odd, because you'd think A was the top level, but it's actually the opposite. The bottom level, the entry level is A1, that's, you know, when you can say, dos cervezas, por favor, you know, or, or whatever, and, uh, and, and C2 is more or less native language uh, level, and the level at which we agreed that I should certify was C1, which is also used in other Danish universities, which is uh, basically very close to native, so it's, 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 it's quite demanding. And I think it's probably the same, more or less the same level they use in Aarhus and Aarhus and places like that, as far as I know. Uh, the difference being, although they have a program like this in, in these other universities, it's not obligatory for new lecturers. That's, that's the difference. So this is the first time we've tried it more or less in the same way as them. 
I'm just, I've just taken a little extract from the, the criteria for C1 level, so you know what you're dealing with. It says, can express him or herself fluently and spontaneously without much obvious searching for expressions. Can use the language flexibly and effectively for social, academic, and professional purposes. Can produce clear, well-structured, detailed text, that includes speaking, on complex subjects, showing controlled use of organizational patterns, connectors, and cohesive devices. I'll unpack that in a minute. But what I was interested in is I, I don't actually agree with all of this, you see. This is my problem. I'm using this frame of reference. But that, without much obvious searching for expressions, as I said, said to you earlier, I think it can actually be advantageous for your audience that you search, that you stop a second. Mm -hmm. It makes it more authentic, more alive, gives people time to think. So I, this is based, actually, I think the CFR is quite strongly based on the old-fashioned, you know, English native speaker model, that excellence is sounding like an English person and being able to just speak. I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. But anyway, why certify at Orborg University? Well, because we have to teach in English, and there are two main activities, as someone pointed out earlier, lecturing and supervising. And just to cut, I'm, 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 I need to go quite fast because we use quite a lot of time on the discussion, but basically, I have a concept which I call the advanced basic learner. And we've been touching on it, or you touched on it, in what you said earlier. The advanced basic learner, which is a concept I've produced, is to do with this, that most of you will have um, high school English plus experience from whatever you know, you've done in your lives. Um, and that would bring you up probably to a B1 or B2 level. It's pretty good. It's, it's high level and enough for most of what you do. In your own academic field, however, most of you would be definite C2s, which is the top level, because you have a range of vocabulary and sophisticated written um, structures and constructs that you've got from your reading and from your own writing, which you've integrated and have become part of you. But there's a sort of gap I've experienced between those two things, that some people ha have this sort of ability to, to, to speak at a very high level and to say sort of fairly ordinary things, but then between, it's how do you explain, how do you unpack these complex concepts that can produce that when, you know, like you said, when you, 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 you're you not quite sure, you, you, you pause for a second, not quite sure how to say it. So that's what I call the advanced basic learner. It's the advanced person who's probably more advanced than most English people in certain respects, but also can have a gap uh, underneath that level to a lower level. So I'm suggesting that some C1 level skills are needed to unpack complexity for students in class. That that's a really useful thing to have. So that's the sort of that's what I'm aiming for is that that level just below C2, and that's why I think C1 is an appropriate level to go for. Okay, now just I mentioned this earlier, but it's just to sort of explain that there is a, a thinking behind this. Um, what we're using here, what CFR is based on, is the idea of modular instruction and certification. And that's improving the learner's proficiency in a restricted area for a particular purpose. The CFR is a massive thing. It can be for anything, for business, for pleasure, for teaching, whatever. But they have a principle that you can go in there and you can adapt it to whatever it is that you need to do in a particular context. So. That's why I've chosen only oral production and interaction skills for lecturing and supervision in English for doing what we call English medium of instruction. That's just so you know where this is coming from. So <coughs> what's the Allborg model of CFR certification for English medium of instruction? First of all, it's the C1 language standard. It's the use of English medium of instruction communication skills and it's EMI pedagogy. So as I said before, it's three-pronged. Language, trying to help you to improve if you need it. Um, communication skills, that could be something as simple as speaking fairly slowly, clearly, um, you know, uh, organizing materials with slides so it's easy to follow. It, it's, it's all sorts of little things, little details. And then the pedagogy that we were just talking about. And I was thinking that actually with PBL, which I assume you're all fairly expert in, um, that we have a big advantage because it makes us break things down into smaller units. 
puts in discussions into the middle of it and activities rather than long, long lectures, you know, 90 minutes of just one person talking. So in some sense, we're already in that position that you were talking about where you can produce activities that mean that people actually discuss it or where you get feedback like you were talking about as well. So I think we, we, we do have an advantage because we're in a PBL environment. Another defining principle of the certification program here is feed forward. Normally I'd explain that, but I'm pretty sure you know what feed forward is or what. Um, in other words, um, I don't just test, which is what happens at uh, a lot of universities. Um, they just sort of certify. I think that certification and, and, and learning go together. So what I do is, basic, the basic principle that you'll have seen on the structure is that you, you do a screening in the beginning to find out what your needs are. I then offer courses which you, I recommend that you, you know, join in this course or that course. But you're totally welcome, even if I don't recommend it, to join in. And also, if I recommend a course, it's totally up to you whether you take part or not. It's, it's voluntary. That's a, an important principle, I think. Um, so it's just a recommendation. The screening, I, I do a quick test, half an hour, find out what you can do, where I think you might have some, some use for help. I offer the help. You choose to take it or not. And then we do the certification at the end. Is that? How is the screening? Coming to that in a minute. It's coming up in a second. Um, I just get the other defining principle, <laughs> which is no man left behind. Uh, which by that I mean that uh, in some certification programs, if you, if you don't get through, that's it, you know, tough luck. My principle is if you don't get through, I'll help you afterwards and get you there. So I, d I don't stop. I don't give up, basically. Uh, I'm, I'm stubborn. So as long as you can stand it, I'll be there to help you. Okay, that's, that's, that's the, the principle there. So what are the criteria for certification? And I have a selection, because there are loads of them. It's a, I've got a whole list which I'll give you later and you can look at in your own time. In terms of language, it's vocabulary, you know, width and, and ease in finding the right words that we were talking about earlier. Accent and intonation, are the, are the, is it easy to understand? Does it have that rhythm and, and, and stress patterns that, that would make it easy to understand? Uh, signposting, are you telling people where you're going? Do you use words like however, but, you know, for example, to make it clear? Because very often what we do is, especially when we're speaking a foreign language, is that we leave out those little signposts that can help. I don't know why, but it's, it's been observed. Flexibility in the language. You know, do, do you get stuck in that sort of academic language or can you break it down as well and move between the various levels? That's the sort of things I'm looking for. Grammar, I'm not really interested in it, but I'm forced to do it because there's an element of, of the, the, the framework that demands that. And sophistication, not in terms of being sort of like, you know, as you, as you were saying, having the, the perfect way of formulating something, but having the degree of sophistication necessary to communicate what you want. Okay, but on the, the other side, and you'll notice pedagogy is, is, is really absent. I have to put in a third column now I've talked to you. Um, organization of materials to make it easier for people, that the organization is apparent through signposting. Volume and pace it can be heard. It's not too fast. A little thing that you'll, you'll observe later if you, if you go on my pronunciation course is that one of the key things about English is the length of vowel sounds on stressed syllables where we put a stress on a word we keep it very long even if we're speaking fast whereas the unimportant words get shortened down and don't have stress so stress patterns are really important if you want to improve the sound of your English and make it easier to understand okay so volume and pace are important emphasis you know as someone said about sounding flat uh, like, you know, being able to create this, this rhythm, this stress, this intonation, and then smash into a particular word to show it's important. Because these are all important parts of oral production that aren't there in writing. Um, so I look at that. Interest and life, that's a bit general, but, you know, I, is, it, is it interesting? <laughs> I know it's very basic, but, but if you ask students, that's probably the most important thing of all. They really like people who burn, you know, burn for what they're doing, who are really alive and, and interested. Turn taking when you're supervising. Do you just take over? Do you produce long, long, long turns? We talked about meeting on a communication, uh, uh, what's it called, a conversation analysis course. And the, the length of turn, 
lecturers tend to take very long turns. So what happens is that they kill the, the input of the, the, you know, of the students. Um, so do you keep what you say short, or do you then launch into a new mini lecture every time when you're supervising? That's another thing that we can look at. And then I have a, one of my favorite uh, expressions, which is simple complexity. That is the art of taking what is complex, keeping the complexity, not abandoning it, not getting rid of it, but presenting <coughs> it bit by bit, simply, so it builds up in a logical pattern. So these are not, they're not, you know, that different from what you, is basic pedagogy anyway, I don't think, not in my, in my view. But they are particularly important when it comes to speaking in. And then, and then I have, you know, my main communication criterion is very simple. Does it work? I'm not, we were talking about being practical, I'm, I'm useless, my hands are sort of fixed like this, and I can't, go, if I go under the bonnet of a car, I have no idea what's going on whatsoever. But I'm interested, does it drive? Does it drive fast and well? And, and, and that's all I'm interested in here, is just, does it work? A very, very basic principle. So, what I do is, just to, to give you an insight, I mean, I have to do this with people from every single uh, institute in the university, all the different departments, including engineering and biochemistry, I know nothing about those. And I say, well, the challenge is, explain it to me. I'm reasonably intelligent. I'm fairly adaptable. I've been doing this for years. Can you explain something that is extremely complex in terms that I can understand? If you can do that, you can do it for your students too. So that's the sort of basic idea of it. Um, I mentioned PBL earlier. Um, it's, uh, PBL has some consequences, I think, that are useful for us. For example, when, when you do the certification and the screening, I'll ask you to give a short presentation of a complex topic, only about 10 minutes. But, but I think, I don't know whether you agree, but, but actually in our classroom practice, it's a good idea to keep it down to 10, 15 minutes anyway, and then give them something to do with it you know, like discuss it or, or some activity and then do another 10 or 15 minutes on another aspect. So what I ask you to do is to select something and to talk briefly about it because there's always an input side to what you're doing. You'll always be doing a bit of lecturing. Um, also, the simple complex, which I talked about earlier, that there should be a dialogical style of presentation that would allow people to think about what you're saying um, and to, to use it, to put it on particular cases for, for problems, etc. And the discussion, also important, is that you can discuss unfamiliar topics with unprepared flexibility, because that's what happens. I don't, well, it does in my department. I don't know if it does with you. That is, it, doesn't, it isn't necessarily your particular focal area that someone's writing a, 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 you know, a paper on, a term paper or whatever, or a thesis or whatever it is, but you've somehow got to go in and, and get all this material and without being fully prepared to, to actually give some input to it. So it's about being able to deal with what is unfamiliar fairly fast. That has consequences for how the screening and certification works, which I'm going to get to in a minute. So what happens is the screening, which will happen, is it next week, I think, that I'm having you for screening? And that's a half hour individual activity. Then there's the participation in courses where you need it and where you want to. Then there's the certification. And if you don't get it, then there's extra help available if you've participated. And certification two, if further attempts are needed, we'll go on helping as long as the institute pays. It, 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 run, it, it runs until uh, January or, or how? It yeah, that's uh, for the first certification. But after that, if people, we can make individual arrangements if you don't get through. That's what I'm saying is I'm here for you if you need me. Because I, 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 that's my no man left behind principle or no woman left behind. So the screening, you asked me, what's it like? Well, it goes like this. Uh, it lasts 30 minutes, uh, for the 30 minutes set for each person. And the first thing that happens when you come in is that I'm going to ask you to present your research. And that can be misunderstood. It should say presentation of a chosen aspect of your research. Because if you try to present the whole thing, it will go wrong in 10 minutes, obviously. So I want to see what you can do in those 10 minutes, you know, when you're on, as though you were lecturing. And that requires some advanced preparation. You need to get that ready. OK, then the second thing is a reading. You get a text that you've never seen before that I've selected, pretty short, with an interesting topic. I ask you to read it aloud. 
uh, that allows me just to, because I, I know the text, then I can focus on your pronunciation and any issues that might be there, so I can recommend whatever course of action would be necessary if you need help. Um, and you can orientate yourself in what the reading is about, what the text is about. And then when we've done that, I then ask you to summarize what you've just read, not in detail, just, just basically what was it about, and then we discuss it. Okay? So that's the, the bit where you haven't had time to prepare. That's where you go out into more unfamiliar territory. This part you can prepare, and this part you can't prepare. And that, I think, reflects what you're actually, the situation you're in. But this text, is it about um, a subject that we know something about? Or Which the, one? The, the reading. No, no, it's just general interest. Yes. It could be something uh, it be from technology. Medicine. It I'll could be something. Oh my God. Usually it's, it's, it's just <laughs> anything. They're, they're, general, they're not, they're not uh, academic articles. They're ones that I've taken from, from uh, you know, like The Economist or The Guardian or something, just matters of general topical interest, you know. Sometimes they're about the academic world. Yeah. So, so is that okay? Do you, you, you get the idea there? <laughs> and and I'm, I mean, all I can do, because it's only me, that's where I got to, wasn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a bit exam-like, so apologies for that. But, it, I, I, you know, I don't have much time and I want to give you a bit of feedback and things like that. And what I say to you on the basis of that is simply a recommendation. You can choose to take it or leave it. Um, but, but that's what's on offer. Is, and I'll show you what the courses are in a second. So, I then put you in a band, but not that kind of band that plays music. It's a screening band, and this is, these are the ones I've used all the way through. Band A means, why am I, it's because I'm using the wrong one. Um, the screening bands are band A, which means you've got a long way to go. It's a long way up the mountain. Um, very few people go into that. Uh, band B is that you're nearly there. That's where most people end up, a lot of people. It means your English is really good, but you could just do with a little bit of help here and there, maybe if you want it. And band C, um, basically, I don't think I can help you. You're so good that you don't need to do anything else if you don't want to. You could just, in, in my, as far as I can see, you'll just walk straight through the certification. So you don't have to waste your time if you don't want to. So basically it works that, that, that some people need an awful lot of help, but not many of them. Some people I think are pretty close and need to participate in one or two courses if they want to. And band C, uh, it's up to you, but you don't need to do anything. Uh, I can't guarantee you'll get through, but, but it's looking that way. So, band C then. No, Excellent. Yeah. Oh, I'm still pressing the wrong thing. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> band C. Uh, adequate for university instruction. Uh, it doesn't mean, you know, that you're a native speaker, but you're certainly good enough. Um, and <coughs> there's no recommendations for courses before certification, but you can... You know, use your, any on, of the online resources and you can come along if you want. And you go straight to certification, but there's no guarantee that you'll get through. Ban B, uh, strong English. People sometimes say to me, well, my English is really good. Yeah, but this is really demanding. Um, and what happens with people who have strong English is that, that very often there are small details that can get in the way of really good performance at, at the university level. So it's just a few you know, sort of like adjustments, a little bit of tweaking and, and tightening up. And you'll get recommended one of three courses, or all three, or two of them. Accelerated English, lecturing in English, pronunciation. And when, you, when those courses are finished, then I do the final certification. Okay? And I'll explain what those courses are. Ah, Band-Aid speakers. None of you are going to be that, so we'll just leave that. It just means it's, it's going to be a lot of work. And I'm don't count on you getting through the first time, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to help. But. Okay, so the courses. Accelerated English, if I recommend that to you, this is a, a, a course which has two elements. It's basically to, goes into the motor room of the language and works with the fundamentals, including grammar, <coughs> which you said you, you might want. Uh, but there are two parts. One is oral interaction, and what happens there is that uh, typically I ask people to read texts on a theme and they're in a group of say six or seven people. Everybody has a different text on the same theme and so they're the only one in their group that's read it. And then when they meet up, they summarize what they've read at home 
Um, you know, they've just prepared a couple of notes and just give a short version of it so the others know what it's about. And everybody shares with everybody else, and then we discuss the topic. So that's the sort of interaction part. People usually like that bit. And then there's the hard part, which is the language themes, which is to do with building up academic vocabulary um, and, you know, producing more sophisticated English, grammar, and some of the strategies that you can use to do with argument, um, contrast, cause and effect, et cetera. Okay, so, so the, the, that's the, the, the parts of the accelerated English. And there's a book for that, by the way. So if, if you do decide to take that course or get you know, recommended that course, I'd re you'd need to get hold of the book fairly quickly. I can't remember if it's on the, did that ever get sent to you? No, so I'll have to somehow get that out to you pretty quickly so you've got it, so you know, because you can get it from Amazon within about three or four days, but you need to move fast. Okay, so that's the accelerated English course. And then there's the lecturing in English course. And basically, I don't anticipate you having need for that, but you might. Um, and basically, what I've done there is, with the help of Paul, who's standing behind the camera over there, we've made a, a, a series of films, and they're online. So they're just some of the basic principles that, uh, for lecturing that are particularly useful in a uh, EMI environment. And it was, it was your idea, wasn't it? I remember. <laughs> Yeah, you, you got that going right back in the beginning. So they've been very useful and very popular since as well. So that's basically something you can do on your own in the office. And then you come along for a four-hour workshop, uh, restricted to only six people, because otherwise you have to sit there too long and listen to other people. And you do a, uh, a presentation for 10 minutes of a topic from your discipline. Um, and you get feedback on the basis of the criteria that were in the film. And you know, recommendations for how to do it better, et cetera. I used to do it twice, but basically it wasn't much point because people were perfect the second time. So hopefully uh, it's enough with just one. Okay, does that make sense? Um, yeah. And then the third course is not long enough. I wish I had more time, but it would cost too much. It's a, a really basic course in pronunciation, but it deals with two aspects of pronunciation. One is the basic sounds of English, that's pretty boring, it's a bit mechanical, but we just go through, make sure you've got the sounds right. Um, and, but two, which is much more interesting, is the use of stress and intonation patterns in English to create the rhythm and the, the lack of flatness that I think you were talking about earlier. Um, so people have actually uh, found that quite useful, but it's not long enough, I wish I had more time. But then I give recommendations for books and audio material and links, etc., so you can work with it on your own. So it's basically a resource thing. It's just to point you in, in a direction, and then you can do your own work on it. Okay, so those are the, those are the three courses. And it ends up with certification, which is exactly the same as screening. And there's a reason for that, because what I found was when I first started doing this, people didn't really get everything that they were expected to do. So people would say, oh, I haven't prepared anything, or... Um, oh, I didn't realize I was going to have to read something up, or, oh, that, you know, I wasn't expecting that. So basically, by having done it once in screening, you're then prepared for the actual certification. It's exactly the same procedure, except there's less time on feedback. Uh, there'll be someone else there, because it's an official piece of paper, and we sort of, you know, it's just like the exam, you go outside and we discuss, was it good enough or not, and then you get very brief feedback, and hopefully go through. And that's it. And the lecture could be the same. Just Sorry? And the lecture yep, could be the want. same, just yeah, improved. Absolutely. I used to try and vary it, and, but then I just decided that's not worth it because, you know, you're busy people. Why should you have to produce something new? So, yeah, it could be, could be the same. Whatever you want to do. But you might find from the first time that it was too big. For example, that quite often happens to people. They can't do it in time, and they go faster and faster, and that gives a problem. So, but if you want to, you're very welcome. And that's it, really. Yes, I would really appreciate if you could send a link to an uh, audio material that can be used in the car, because that's yeah. the best way for me to... to well, I might, I might forget, because I've got so much going on right now, but yeah. you just remind me once we get going, once I see, or at the, uh, you know, when I do the, the, the test, screening thing, yes. and I'll, I'll get you going on that. Because that's, that's, that's definitely part of what I do. Yeah. Um, and th there are loads of them, there's just so many, and you, could, and you can buy stuff as well, you can have your own audio... CDs or whatever you want. That would yeah. be great. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's tons of it out there. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Any questions or um, 
did I cover it enough to? And I'm sorry, you, it was a you bit... will recommend us, re recommend to us which courses that would be relevant for. Exactly, yeah. that's what I do. That's what the screening's for yeah. is to to recommend. Mm. But it doesn't mean you have to do it if you don't agree with me. You know, or you think oh, I can do this, 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 then then just don't do it. But I I, I, I can only say what I think. You know, what I recommend. So it doesn't look like something that you can just wing it and yeah. go through. I mean, it seems like there's a job to do. Yeah. It requires a bit of work, but especially the, the one that, that requires most work is the accelerated English yeah, course. Yeah. The other two you can, you can do without spending too much time on them. Um, and it's up to you how much you follow up on them, basically. But, the, but the, the, if you're on the accelerated course, that is pretty demanding. Mm. So, but from what I've been hearing today, I don't think many of you will be. No. I only know that, I mean, because you already got the dates for the accelerated course, and I know that it's at least three or four dates that's... I mean, I'm away, so yeah. I won't be able to attend those days, but... You just but do what... You I'll, know. I'll try to attend the others. Well, yeah, and we'll have to see how it goes then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and that's what I like. I mean, one of the great advantages of working in, in higher education is that you don't have to sort of say to people, oh, you must do this or you must do that. I mean, it's just whatever you can do and whatever you feel good about. So, And you might not need to anyway, so... so that's uh, basically what I wanted to say today, and I, I, I really enjoyed that uh, discussion earlier. It gave me so many good ideas. I just hope I can remember it now. Um, but fortunately, we got it all on film, so, uh, so that's good. I can watch the film, and then I'll, uh, I'll be able to write and make some notes, which I should have done at the time. But I got so interested in what you were saying, I forgot to write it down. Um, Okay, is that all right? Yes, yes that's excellent. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you very much. See you next week. Ten days. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay.